Welcome to the Women Talk Podcast, where ordinary women share their extraordinary stories. We would love for you to share your story on our podcast. Go to www.womentalk.ca and apply to share your story. And now let's welcome your host, founder, and CEO of Women Talk, Bridget Lassard DL. Irene Bryant is a stage four throat cancer survivor. A speaker, a published author, Irene now facilitates seminars mentoring those who are seeking hope. Irene's story is one of courage and deep, deep faith. Now let's listen to Irene's story. Thank you, Bridget. Yes, my adversity almost 18 years ago was being diagnosed with stage four throat cancer and not given very long to live. So I, uh, I just said, I don't believe them. Um, I believe you, God, and I walked out of the cancer clinic and said, I'll either be healed or go home. Thank you very much. And I was filled with joy. And that night, as I went to sleep, I was contemplating what to do. And I heard within me, no, do not do any of that treatment. So I listened. And that's really my message is no matter what we are going through, whether that be cancer, relationship problems, or financial, or anything, or just a major decision, it's very important for us to listen and then trust that message and take action on it. That takes a lot of courage sometimes and faith because coming against what the doctors wanted to do or what someone else may want you to do isn't always easy. And I'm not saying that everyone has to do what I did. I'm just saying it's important to listen because a lot of people are totally healed through what the doctors are doing. That's perfectly fine. And some through alternative means, sometimes supernaturally. And, you know, sometimes we die. And I say we're all going to die someday. So prepare for it and then focus on living. So that's what I really did. I focused on living, changed my diet, did a lot of things to fight cancer, stopped eating sugar, because cancer cells love sugar. But I mostly forgave. I forgave uh, in a, my husband from, in an abusive mental, emotional situation, and not blaming him for what happened, because I had a lot of forgiveness to do against bitterness and anger and all of that. And that's like taking poison and expecting someone else to die. It doesn't work. So my core message really is listening and trusting that. And if it's, if it's a message that will um, be good for you and good for others and you have peace with it, I think that's very good. We all have that message. And it's important to have the courage to speak about it, to know your gift, to know your calling, and uh, share it whenever you can because it will help other people get through whatever they are going through. They'll be able to relate to you. You can relate to them. And when I'm up to speak, I love speaking and sharing. I know it's not about me. It's about the audience. And it might just be one person that needs to hear what I have to say that will encourage them to take the step that they've been contemplating. So um, that's basically what I share, and I, I love doing it. Do you want more out of Women Talk? Sign up for our Women Talk membership today. Receive discounts at all of our live events, talk on more stages, receive free monthly webinars, or host a webinar yourself. Join this powerful sisterhood we call Women Talk. Visit womentalk.ca slash membership to join at 70% off for a limited time only. Wow, stage four throat cancer. What did that feel like when you heard those words? <laughs> Shock. <laughs> I was very, very shocked because I had been healthy and had eaten really quite well and exercised, done a lot of things. I really hadn't been sick much in my life. So that was a major shock. How did you suspect and, uh, that the you had... Was on... oh, go ahead. How did you suspect that you had throat cancer? Hmm. I didn't. I just had a little bit of a sore throat on one side. Not very much. Not even painful. 
So when it didn't heal up on the way I normally would do it with natural you know, ingredients, I went to the doctor and well, at first I looked in and oh my gosh, I looked in my throat and there was a growth where my tonsil had been the size of half a golf ball. Wow. So then I went <laughs> to the doctor and uh, she took a swab of it and said it came back clear. And then she did a needle biopsy because I had two glands in my neck that were a little bit larger, but it turned out to be lymph nodes. So then she sent me to the cancer clinic and they did a needle biopsy on the lymph nodes and determined it was stage four squamous cell. And then the tonsil area was the main um, primary location. So, so what's metastasized? Wow. So what's yeah. the first? What's the first thing you did? Once I, you found well, out, like I said, I I determined that I was going to live the best way I could live for as long as I had. And you know, our mental state, our mindset, no matter what we're facing, is very important. And what I say to doctors today, do not take people's hope away. You tell them they have a few months to live. Most people will believe you. They will give up hope and go home and die. And they've admitted to me that's exactly what happens. And I understand their position because they see a lot of this. But I said, try and explain it in possibilities so that people still have choices and they still have hope because there's so many healings that, they, that can't be explained. So. There's always hope. And um, when, when we have hope, the possibilities are endless. So, um, and then, of course, my diet. I took cancer-fighting vegetables, um, cancer-fighting supplements. But that forgiveness is so, so important because it frees us of the against the abuse. It doesn't condone the behavior when it's abusive. It just frees us of that torment and releasing that person. And when, another thing I really learned was to receive love, really receive God's love, love from other people. And all the things that happened in that two-year journey really proved to me how much we all are truly, truly loved. And um, we don't always feel it. Especially so, when we've been abused. Why do you think forgiveness is such a big part of it? Like, why forgiveness? Why forgiveness above anything else? When you talk about it, that's what you, one of the main things you talk about and mention. So why do you think forgiveness is so big? Because unforgiveness and bitterness and anger and holding a grudge, like I said, is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And it doesn't work. It eats away at us. Unforgiveness and bitterness. Scientists have proven our, our negative thoughts or those kinds of thoughts are detrimental to our health. And, you know, we're body, mind, and spirit. We're all connected. And all kinds of negativity has an effect on our, our health, our emotions, our ability to do what we feel that we're to do it holds us back it's like putting us in a cage it's like putting us into bondage and we can't get through and a lot of that has to do with the uh you know it's complaining but the negativity of uh, holding on to bitterness and resentment is is powerful and letting it go is so freeing i mean i've been married three times <laughs> and divorced three times and I have no resentment. In fact, I was friends with every one of my first husband's uh, <laughs> later girlfriends. <laughs> it's quite amazing. And that's the power of forgiveness. Because that love then can come through. And it helped me see past their behavior. See past the behavior to say, why is that person acting that way? Or why is that little kid bullying? What's the root cause? And often it's lack of love and having been abused. Mm -hmm. So, and that, but if that child can receive love or if I can receive love, then it's easier to love others. And it's almost giving and receiving go together, no matter what it is. So tell me, where, where did you find all your information about cancer and the do's and the don'ts and the food to eat? And who did you turn to? Where did you find the information? 
Well, I did a lot of uh, research, you know, online, and I'm really grateful that my doctor in Canmore was very supportive of me as well, of doing, uh, going the natural route. But a lot of it online, um, my daughter knew a lot of information as well. Uh, I had a nutritionist that I was working with, and, you know, she helped a bit. I had a friend whose husband had had cancer for five years in his abdomen area. It had tentacles wrapped around parts of his organs, so they couldn't operate. They introduced me to Manatech, which has the product called Ambrotose, which is about cellular communication. And it is absolutely amazing at helping your immune system build up, fight off the cancer cells. And I'm not supposed to make that as a claim. I'm not claiming that medically for anybody. But I know that I know that it works on cellular communication. And then Hippocrates, he said, let your food be your medicine, let your medicine be your food. And very important. But the way we raise our food today and, and all the chemicals and pesticides and the the everything in a box that we take the high sugar the high fat the high everything yeah. not healthy no so raw fruits and vegetables you think um less meat so no no wheat sugar and um dairy for me and very very little meat yeah. wow and even today I make my own kefir I make my own yogurt and not everybody's going to want to do that but I do buy uh, organic as much as, as possible, and I'm really aware of what I'm uh, eating. It's very so important. did that, did that very, begin, did that, that lifestyle of um, not eating sugar and making your own food, did that begin after your diagnosis, or were you doing some of that prior? I was, I was pretty good prior, because I've always been health conscious, but a way, way more after being diagnosed for sure definitely i went off sugar for two years totally <laughs> wow and and, and pardon me I, I, I teach a course a uh, part of my course is living healthy in a toxic world and looking at our diet and even our how we clean our houses getting rid of chemicals all of those kinds of things all the things that will affect our health negatively i've look to see well, what's the opposite of that and what's the positive thing and what helps our health instead of deteriorating it. So how we think is part of it, toxic thoughts <laughs> or healthy positive thoughts, seeing ourselves, well, I say the way God sees us, or, and really valuing our gifts and who we are and sharing that is so, so important. How did you... Your... Oh, have, have a success statement. I said the other night when I was speaking, look at your life at age 90, 95, 100, and look back on it. And, and if you could write it out any way you want it in every area of your life, what would that look like? Just know the limitations. And, you know, when we start believing that, it does something. And then I said, bring it back a year from now. What your success statement will be. And... Um, it makes a difference because part of us, as we believe it, we start doing things that help it to happen. When I did this seminars a while back, I had people saying, Irene, my three-year goals came true in three months. <laughs> so, so important what we're thinking and saying to ourselves. And you're a prime example, Bridget, with Women Talk. You know, you had that. You took action on it. It was like, wow, what a prime example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> now yeah, tell me, I love it. I love um, what doing. after cancer, uh, once you were healthy, um, what, how did your morning routine change? What do you do different than you didn't do before cancer? Okay, well, on a regular morning, <laughs> a normal morning, Monday mornings aren't normal for me because my weekends are so busy, but enjoyable, but late nights, and I love it. But um, normally I start out with a smoothie that consists of an avocado, full avocado, including the pit, not the outside skin, but the pit of the avoca avocado is very full of nutrition. So that, and then I have organic blueberries, strawberries, 
uh, kale, spinach, broccoli, eight to 10 items in a smoothie that is full of nutrition. And I do take, you know, natural, um, you know, supplements as well uh, with that. Then um, I'm, I'm, I'm busy then, you know, I'm working at writing my second book. I'm, I'm also trying to get my paperwork sorted out, get my work in order. But then the game is, is lunch and dinner. Um, I don't snack in between, um, very seldom. I still like chocolate, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't deprive myself of a lot of things that I really enjoy because that's so important. Now, what's um, your uh, I do wear it. What's your favorite uh, favorite thing to teach people? What's your favorite, favorite thing? thing to teach that, yeah, what what brings you the greatest joy when you are able to teach someone something new? Okay. Um I think recognizing that they are First of all, very loved. You know, mine is a faith-based message. I, I believe in God. I have a personal relationship. That relationship has really shown me how much I'm loved, how much God loves the world, and how much we are there to love each other, set boundaries for sure. There's no excuse for abuse and all of that. But if I can help people to really know that they are loved, they are special no matter what they've gone through, and that they all have a gift and a purpose to help them see that and start receiving that. Because so many times, depending on what we've gone through in our lives, we will block the good that God is trying to bless us with or other people are trying to bless us with because we have this comfort zone that if you get a little bit above it that's going too good, we'll block it, we'll sabotage. Whether it's love, relationships, money, success, anything. And so knowing who we are, knowing how loved we are, and knowing that we have a gift to share and a purpose is so important and to help bring them through step by step, no matter where they're at. That's so important. What an important message, because there's certainly a lot of people struggling with cancer. Um, oh, yeah. So if people would like to find out more about you or buy your books, uh, where can they find more information? Well, first of all, the book is available at Better Books and Bibles in Calgary. That's on, uh, I think, 636 16th Avenue Northwest. And I have some as well. They can purchase them through me. They can also go on Amazon.ca. The ebook is on Amazon. So those would be the main. And do you have a website, Irene? I do. IreneBryant.com. They can order it there. Uh, they can even pay with PayPal. If they want to have any counseling or um, prayers or mentoring, they can uh, sign up on the contact page on my website. So, or they can email me, Irene at IreneBryant.com. Well, what a fabulous story. Thank you very much for sharing your story, Irene. Uh, thank you, Bridget, for having me. Do you have a story you're burning to share with our audience? Go to womentalk.ca today and apply to be on our podcast.